My name is Richard Simpson. I am a current research assistant. I've recently completed my masters. In this video, I'll be talking about my reflections of my previous year, which have recently been published and also presented at a conference. Before we start, remember to subscribe. If you've got any comments, click down below. It's a little bit different to what we normally do when we talk about the research. Can you explain what you're going to be talking about today? It's kind of different dimensions to sport and exercise psychology, I guess through a research lens, mm. which we've talked about in our previous videos. But there's also through a kind of applied practice lens. Mm. I'm talking about applied practice, one of the most common go-to methods learning about applied practice is through reflections right. and okay. of your own personal reflections and through vicarious experiences of other people's reflections. Being a sport and exercise psychologist brings about its challenges, but I feel in the lead up to being on the accreditation route and becoming one that you face challenges in a similar kind of way, which I feel in a way prepare you slightly for the challenges you have to come as this picture alludes to been a journey in itself. I actually presented at a conference and I used quite a few metaphors from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings because how I've described my master's year and I guess before that my journey into sport and exercise psychology so far was as an unexpected journey. It was funny to find this image because Billboard Baggins being the main character of an unexpected journey but I think the motorbike uh, edition really sums up how sometimes as a lot of us we don't appreciate the path of the journey we just right. want to get through the journey because we want to be at our outcome goal rather than thinking about the process goals we've done to get there and that's very much what my reflections talk about. And as we can see here we got a picture of Emily Blunt, the girl on the rail replacement bus. Yes, a very fitting metaphor as well. So we're talking about my my post masters experiences, mm -hmm. and I guess hopefully people who have finished the masters can kind of relate to where I'm coming from. So obviously, I talked about an unexpected journey throughout my masters, and then onwards after your masters, you think, okay, straight onto a PhD, straight onto a training accreditation program. For me, unfortunately, not the case. It's not been a smooth ride, and as this metaphor suggests. I've been put on a flipping rail replacement bus. <laughs> My journey still isn't as smooth as I would like. I am very much on the rail replacement bus on the way to Wigan and Bolton from Manchester Piccadilly. And trust me, I've done that journey. It's horrific. It takes ages and it's not the most comfortable either. But And as you could probably see Emily staring out the window, in, in that case, I'm staring out the window thinking what could have been... The things going through my mind in this kind of scenario, post-masters, I've come across so many difficulties. I've almost kind of had a loss of identity, of my own mm. kind of identity. I'm not a student anymore, but what am I? I'm not a PhD mm. student, I'm not a trainee accredited, accredited practitioner. I'm nothing, like, and I guess it, it was a struggle I had. I was trying to work out what I am. I do this, I coach. I'm a, I'm a researcher, but I don't feel wholeheartedly 100% that I'm one of those things. And I think it, it was a struggle not knowing what I'm working towards. What exactly am I? Struggling of identity. Yeah. Yeah. I know who I am personally and on a social level, but what am I academically? And to, what am I aspiring to? A kind of hedonic half well-being or happiness is kind of is great most of the time as much as like it fluctuates it's like that's fine but my eudaimonic well-being what my purpose in life is mm. is something and my what my self-actualization moment is i've been i for a while for the last few months i've been struggling to have um only starting to have glimpses of my own as much as I haven't had like an epiphany moment yet, yeah. I'm having glimpses of what I can do and what I can be, and that's just through trusting the process and process oriented goals. It has been difficult, and I think what I've been trying to do is get involved with a lot of extracurricular things that I can do beyond education. Luckily, I'm a researcher, and I've got involved with a lot of research to do with gender equality. The research I've been getting involved with has had significant impact on coaching as a whole um, across the world. So I've been very fortunate to be involved with the level of research and the type of people I've been involving with. But I think as much as I've been fortunate, I sometimes struggle to think what I am actually doing. 
like what what am I working towards? I know what's contributing towards for other people, and I like helping other people and empowering other people. In regards to my own well-being, there was like a sense of what am I doing, like a sense of where's like what's this doing for me. And it sounds really selfish, but I think to a degree, some people have that kind of thought process, kind of like. If they do things, I mean, is it doing it for my own career? Is it helping my own happiness and enjoyment? And to agree, to agree, don't get me wrong, just I enjoy doing these things and helping people, but I think as I'm so driven towards a career in sport and exercise psychology, it was difficult for a while. Rather than going around in the kind of vicious cycle of what's going on in my head and am I nobody and everything, that I kind of put first and almost from a holistic perspective rather than focusing on my career, I am Richard. Like, I am loved by my family, I'm loved by my partner. Very simple kind of basic things that on a social level, I'm a good friend, you know, things like that. And not focusing on my career. And I think it almost kind of comes stems back from my development into a humanistic philosophy almost. Think about myself rather than my performance. So it's interesting how things can be applied that way. How I've come to solve this kind of loss in my identity is kind of accepting almost that I don't have a real identity yet. And I guess it's led me to think about the difficulties that there is no straight path. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for a lot of us who have a sports science background, so the, myself and Adam very much base is aligned with sport and exercise science. There's no simple path for us. We can't. We are not on the gold standard route unless we do a conversion course. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, we are not all made of money. Like we, I mm -hmm. think if we did a Nova postgraduate and a conversion course, we wouldn't be able to get a loan for that. I don't think we could mm -hmm. only get one postgraduate loan. So that's for me. That's where my barrier is because I've got. I'm waiting for this new basis path. It's been tough, really tough, because mm -hmm. I I want to make it as a practitioner, and. It's been kind of working on my mental health when, as much as I learned from things like not getting PhDs, getting through the interview and not quite making it on, yeah. um, through that kind of dealing with myself through lack of opportunities and doing what I can do, it's still difficult. I'm doing things the right way. And there's sadly quite a few people I've come across via social media and networking with them that they're not doing things the right way. They're looking for ways to skip the queue. Even, even if it's not necessarily kind of against any kind of law, they find a loophole and they're offering things outside their scope. I've heard the term keeping in your lane. Staying in your lane, yeah. yeah. Staying in your lane. Yeah, yeah. and it's been difficult because I've, I'm so disciplined and strict and I've been brought up through my master's degree very much on the codes of conduct. Which disappoints me. And I very much ad try where possible to adhere to that, even though I'm not you know, aligned to BPS, like I try and keep to that because I see it as the gold standard. Yeah. And I've had conversations with people that you, you can still develop yourself, do workshops and things like that. Mm. And I agree, there's things that you can do that, that, you, that practitioners do like, but I think there's things within certain competencies mm. that you need to be audited and trained towards. Mm. And it's just, a, it's a shame and it's a disappointment when you see people not following the kind of gold, the gold standard almost. It's like the people who kind of say they're doctors or they, they can treat people and like, I can tell you what's good and not good for you. Yeah, like obviously there's nurses, but they have their own scopes of what they do and can't do and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It disappointed me when I know I'm doing things the right way, but opportunities aren't happening for me. Did it frustrate you? Yeah, yeah. massively. And then these opportunities have been provided to people doing things that they shouldn't be doing from governing bodies who have no idea or knowledge of what they should and should not be accepting. But I think one way I've dealt with it is disclosure. And I've talked about supervision earlier, and supervision is key, like having a mentor or someone you trust. It doesn't necessarily have to be close to you, but someone you can speak to and they can give you advice on. And I think, because there's no instant fix, sadly, with these things. Mm. With an athlete coming to improve their performance, there's no instant fix. Mm. There needs to be and a lot of hard work into it. That's the same, same with well-being and health. But disclosing to people is how you start. What challenges I'm facing, the expectations and pressure I place on myself, the perfectionistic mm. kind of tendencies I have, 
some good and some bad because perfectionism is both good and bad. It can be functional and malfunctional and I've, I've kind of shown the strivings, like the kind of determination to work hard and stuff like that, but I've also not really controlled myself the best I can when I've placed my expectations up here. As much as I aspire to be great, I say great, as great as I can be. And I think the best piece of advice I can give to people is aim high, but be be honest and realistic with yourself. There's nothing to say you can't do like publish, you can't go to conferences, you can't become a practitioner, there's nothing to say you can't do that. Within the resources and the skills and equipment you have, you've got to be realistic.